I'm Dr. Enrico Lochkori, and welcome to another episode of Living a Full Life. This week, we're going to dive into some cool science behind lasers. So if you're a nerd, you're going to love this one and how class four lasers are used in all types of modalities and rehab across all healthcare industries from dermatology, physical therapy, chiropractic, neuroscience. It goes across and it's a cool modality that's been used for over four decades, believe it or not. It just keeps getting better and better as we fine tune the frequencies and the wavelengths. So we can dive deep into this and how lasers can be used for different issues from tendinopathies, tendinitis, sprained ligaments, uh, strained muscles, disc herniations, inflammation, and more importantly, the brain and how we use it in our office. It's, it's a cool thing. So let's dive deep into class four laser. And we say class four instead of just lasers because there are different classes of lasers. Ones you can buy off Amazon and bring home and they look like a pen laser are not even classed. They are just uh, continuous light. And uh, if you've ever had one of those laser pointers that you play with your kids, there is no therapeutic effect because it doesn't even penetrate the first layer of the skin. So it doesn't do much as far as stimulation. When we get into class three and four, the difference is, uh, they don't burn. So up to class three, class three B lasers, you won't get a continuous stream of light that could burn the epithelial layer of the skin or even deeper. So when we get into cosmetol or yeah, cosmetology and dermatology, what you end up using is the burning class four lasers in different techniques to help with wrinkles, uh, chemical peels, skin irritations, moles, and then there's a whole bunch of things that they use it for in dermatology. What we're talking about with lasers is how we can use it to help speed up the process of healing in the body. So it's a really cutting cutting edge tool in modern healthcare. I've used it for 20 years. I had a class 3B laser in Canada. We used it. I liked it. It was safe because it wasn't going to ever burn anyone. Here, we've introduced the class 4 laser, and we're do already doing some amazing things as far as healing and the potential impact on brain health as well. It's, it's really cool. So it differs from class 3 because of the continuous pulse that's there. But the, emi the emission of infrared light and its ability to penetrate into deep tissue is where class four is one step above and probably the, the gold standard when it comes to laser therapy is it has the deepest penetration, has usually more power to it. You can even buy machines with different wattages of power. Uh, the cheaper machines can get up to 10 watts of power. The mid-range ones up to 50 uh, watts of power. You can buy the 100 watts of power as well. The only difference between going through that much kilojoule or watts between 50 and 100 is just to speed up the therapy. So let's say it's a physical therapy office and they do a lot of patients and this machine has to do a lot of work. The high power one will shorten the time of treatment. Uh, but 50 and 100 is typically the therapeutic dose and powerhouses that you'll see in the, in the industry. Okay. So there's cellular effects that happen with laser. And so you're probably thinking, why would I ever need to use laser? Well, if you have an acute injury and you see inflammation or feel the inflammation, laser's a no brainer. It's going to be faster than ice or heat. It's going to be faster than any type of topical you can use. It's going to be almost as fast as a steroid. Honestly, it's going to be, and it's going to be localized. So instead of ingesting a pill or a steroid or getting an injection, you can go right to the source of the inflammation, light it up with red light, and uh, inflammation immediately goes down. So what happens is the mitochondria in all of the cells in your body, especially the damaged tissue, absorb the light, and then you get photobiomodulation, which increases the production of ATP. It's adenosine triphosphate. It's the energy-producing um, molecule and chemical in the mitochondria that's released. Now, it's normally released at a certain rate. It's, produ it's produced all the time, all throughout your life, in every cell in your body. But when the light hits it, the mitochondria speed up that process and you get a huge influx of ATP, which creates a lot of healing and waste removal from the area, which pushes inflammation out. So then you trigger cellular repair and regeneration at a faster rate. Hence, the healing process speeds up. So you can take something like a severe high ankle sprain or low ankle sprain that will take four to six weeks to heal and treat it within two weeks. And the patient can be back on the basketball court playing with minimal to no pain. Um, and you probably want to tape it and secure the ankle for another two weeks to make sure you get full healing so there's no more damage there. But that's the power of 
red light of uh, the the laser light that we get, and it's different than red light. So you you'll see red light spectrum from infrared saunas all the way up to class four lasers, and infrared has a lower wavelength. When you sit in there and you get hot quite quickly, you can feel the heat from the light right away. Then there's red light therapy where you may get like pads or or boxes of red light or even like we have in our office the full bed that you lie in and you get full body modulation of red light even that wavelength is a little bit lower so it takes a little bit longer to get warm and the penetration is only one to two centimeters below the skin that's why we help with uh, cellulite um, fat cells skin it's great for skin and psoriasis and rashes and anything there it even cleans up brain fog and even some allergies but once you get to class four now you can get six, seven, 10 centimeters of penetration, which is quite deep, two to three inches deep, which now you can start helping things like organs, uh, discs, um, deep uh, hips, shoulders, people with bigger shoulders, you can get deeper into that to help with rotator cuff issues. And that's how you help speed up the healing process. Now the brain, that is what this whole podcast is about. We, you know, sprains and sp strains are great. But uh, we know what to do with that ice, heat, see the chiropractor, do some massage. Those things all heal because we all know, listening to this podcast, that the body heals itself. So if you ever hurt yourself, just rest and chances are your body's going to heal, right? So now let's talk about the brain. The brain also heals itself, but this is a new frontier, especially with light therapy. And if you know a little bit about what we do and how we help with chiropractic and vibration and modalities and reflexes to help stimulate the neuroplasticity of the brain, especially in children, you can see why we added this as a no brainer to help add another modality to speed up the great success that we already get in our office. So when it comes to brain health, uh, we need to think of a couple things when we're using modalities. One tough part about the brain is it's encapsulated in a bowling ball. It's cool. It's called your skull. And that skull is a, a very strong encasement for this brain. It's there for a reason. It's to protect this very important organ. And it's a little bit thick to penetrate. So you can't really get to it. You can't really massage the brain. You can't touch the brain. This is all good. This is a good thing. You don't ever do that. But uh, penetrating the skull is the first thing. So this is where wavelength comes into, into effect. Having a class four laser can penetrate the bone because it's, a, uh, you know, the, the skull is a thinner bone, but still it needs enough energy to penetrate that, to light up brain tissue. So you can now get the surface of the brain and we know where the brain's mapped, right? Everything is on the surface from sensory motor speech. Everything's on there. You just need to know where it's mapped on the brain. You can light this area up almost in a tennis ball sized area each time and moving quickly so that you don't burn the skin or especially the hair follicles. And what ends up happening when you light up neural tissue anywhere in the body, peripheral nerves in the body or central nerves in the brain, you stimulate neural repair and you improve oxygenation of the cells immediately when it comes to the brain. This is huge in healing but, and you say, well, wh why would you need to heal the brain? This would be maybe like a concussion, uh, a hit to the head, a hematoma, um, any lesion to the brain that could happen. This is big in sports therapy too. So anyone that does a concussion should be using class four lasers. They use it in the NFL. They use it for the pro athletes. Um, so we can treat our patients like pro athletes as well. There are potential benefits for conditions like traumatic brain injuries, migraines, and even neurodegenerative disorders like Parkinson's or ALS or MS too, where if you can get an MRI, see where the lesions are, you might be able to create some photo, photo modulation in that area to help stimulate oxygen and nutrient repair to that tissue. Again, ATP, right? It's all good stuff. And the nice thing about red light and cold laser is it's safe. It's so, so great. Um, they're even using it. One contraindication, well, there's two, to laser would be pregnancy. We don't want to use the laser on the abdomen during pregnancy. We don't want to increase ATP production in, um, the developing fetus because it's already on hyper warp speed as it's growing. It's already, it's the one part of our life where we're in the fastest growth mode ever. And our cells are replicating like crazy anyway. So to, to bring light to that area and create even more ATP and more speed, it sounds contraindicative, which it is, which it is. So you don't want to mess up that wonderful process that's happening. Uh, so that's one 
contraindication is just to keep it away from the abdomen. So if a mom has a headache or an ankle sprain or anything, she can use it anywhere in her body is perfectly safe. We just don't want that light going into the womb. And then number two, cancer, some types of cancers, the fast growing uh, teratomas that are replicating quickly again, probably a bad idea to put in red light or, or laser light and stimulate ATP in atypical cells of cancer. So that, that makes sense too. But the new frontier of class four laser is that they are using it for some types of cancers like lymphomas and other things there too, and sarcomas. So to help reduce inflammation and bring more oxygen to the area, which most atypical cells don't like oxygen. They like acidic environments and less oxygen. So bringing more there kind of stifles their their progress. So, but again, we don't do that stuff in our office, but those are the two contraindications. So when it comes to the brain, this is the stuff I love is the brain uh, because it's, it's mapped out so perfectly. We, we've done such great research over the last thousand years, you know, even way back in the day when they were just, people were alive and they just removed part of their skull and touched their brain and saw, saw what happened. We learned a lot and we mapped out this brain and now we know where every part controls, which is very, very cool. So knowing that map and having that geography of the brain really helps us help people with across all spectrums when it comes to the brain. Who doesn't need some brain stimulation? I do. I, geez, I, I could use it myself too. It's sometimes brain fog, fatigue, all the things that, that are having stress all those things that are there too. But when it comes to the, the children that we help in our office, they're usually with neurodivergent conditions like ADHD. They're on the spectrum. They have sensory processing disorder, behavioral dysregulation, enuresis, whatever these things may be, we're seeing a faster result. We already get amazing results pretty quick with what we do in our office with the chiropractic and, and primitive reflexes that we, that we know to map out and train and teach to do at home with exercises. But adding this just it makes it smooth, you know, like that smooth icing on a cake. It just makes it super nice and easy and effective to get results faster, which, of course, families love because that's what they're in for. So the science behind class four laser and children is that it's gentle stimulation of the neural pathway. So we're not overstimulating anything. Again, zero side effects with this. The only thing that can happen is positive. Even if you take a re relatively healthy child that has no symptoms, let's say, and you and you do some type of therapy for their brain, there'll be really no effect to it. You may not notice anything positive or negative from it because there is no negatives to it. It's absolutely great. So used by a professional, no problems there. It's gentle. It has potential to improve neuroplasticity and brain function. That's why we're doing this. For me, diving deep into neuroscience, we know that the brain in the fetus and in the early development, we even with like one month, four months, six months old, these, these infants that are still breastfeeding and not doing much movement yet and not quite crawling during this rapid growth between the nine, 10 months in utero and the next four to six months after that. So those first 60 months of development is where the brain is creating, it's just like planting a new shrub or flower bush in your garden or in your yard. And when you get a new one and it starts to grow, what do you do right away? You start pruning it. One, for to take shape. Two, to grow healthy and strong branches and to grow uh, more lush, right? That's the whole point of it is you keep it. Otherwise, if you let a hydrangea bush just grow, right, it just grows out of control. The, the leaves start growing past the flowers, then they don't get enough sunlight, and then you get less flowers and it's straggly. Can you tell I've moved to Florida? Yes, you can. Okay, so now you have this and you prune it, it's just like any tree, any any palm, any tree, oak tree, anything like that, you prune this to make sure it grows nice and healthy. There you go, same thing that naturally happens in the brain. So we have all these reflexes as a newborn, startle reflex, moral reflex, the Babinski reflex where the toes curl, the startle, you know, when you, when you clap your hands, they startle, they may even cry. All these reflexes need to go away or be pruned by the brain naturally by six to 12 months. So within that first year of life. So the brain's doing its natural pruning. But sometimes we miss a few branches. And for whatever reason, uh, in uterine uh, constriction, traumatic birth process, uh, toxic exposure, whatever may be, all of the above. And it interrupts that process of pruning in the brain. So then we're stuck with these called retained reflexes. And as a chiropractor, I see this in 
fully grown adults, 40, 50 year olds, you're touching their back and they have this startle reflex and this contracture of gallant or moral reflex, whatever it may be that they've retained. And then you give them exercises, you adjust them, you put them on the vibration plates and they create that vibration frequency after an adjustment, they go home, they do some snow angels on the carpet and they come in a few months later after a few adjustments and all those retained reflexes are gone, but they were living with them their whole life. So same thing with kids. We need to find these primitive reflexes and prune the, the, the baby branches so that when we prune them, they grow new uh, connections, new synapses, stronger synapses to the brain, which helps regulate control, all types of control, sensory control, motor control, behavioral, um, social, adaptive, academic. That's what ends up happening. How can we prune these baby branches so that they can grow? Well, red light does this because we know where to put the where to put the light and we can concentrate the light in that area. So as we adjust and we create the new synapses and light up the brain literally through the chiropractic adjustment and through class four laser, you're stimulating fast pruning and growth of this beautiful garden so it grows lusher and thicker with new synapses. It's very cool. Encouraging calming effects and better focus through improved circulation and cellular repair as well. That's always a good thing more circulation, more cellular repair, but the brain shouldn't be going through a lot of trauma. So we don't want to see a lot of cellular damage, which isn't typical. The neural cells in the brain typically live out their full lifespan because they don't have to go through a lot of trauma. So head, head traumas are that too. But if we ever have a concussion or hit our head, that might be a good idea to quickly light up the tissue to help reduce inflammation through there as well. So we can check for those things as well. So the safety protocols of class four laser are so simple. When a patient comes in, they use these green glasses to protect any of the red light going into their eyes. Oh, I guess that's a third contraindication is continuous class four or a laser going to into the eye, through the iris into the retina. If it hits the retina, it can actually burn or damage the retina. So there is, there is a risk there. So we don't let, we don't let the kids play with this. We don't aim it at the eyes. Uh, both the doctor and the patient can wear the glasses, but I definitely give it to the kids because I make sure not to point it at my eyes. Uh, but other than that, it, uh, knowing what, how to use it is great. And there are some lasers that we actually send home with parents as well, like class 3B. They can never burn the, their their child. They can never. So there's ones that you can buy. They're not cheap. They're in the five to $7,000 range, but uh, it's a lot for therapy, right? To invest in that. So coming to the office and doing it in an office is, is the best bet. So if you've heard this podcast and it's stimulated a lot of thought and you're like, oh my gosh, my, my friend's kids, these people, that, oh, I think I've hit my head 20 times, whatever it is, look for a, a class four laser office near you. If you're in the Tampa area, of course, Full Life Chiropractic is your go-to for all this. It's newer to our office. We've had it for just over a month. The results are amazing. We've had people with plantar fasciitis, two treatments, better. People with knee pain, two treatments, better. You know, rotator cuff, five treatments, better. Um, numbness, tingling, disc herniations. We're just adding this to the therapies and we're getting results faster, which is un it's, uh, unbelievable. It's absolutely great. Uh, we're super happy we have it. And it's just a new modality to talk more about what? The brain. We have to just keep convincing people about their brain. You never see your brain. It's stuck in that bowling ball that we talked about. So if you did, you'd treat it a lot better. If you could see it, if our, if our skulls were made out of glass, you would look at your brain every single day and you try and make it uh, as healthy as possible because that would be the sexy thing to do, right? Is just to look good. So your brain would look good too. Same thing I talk about smokers too. I wish there was a window right here in our chest where we could see our heart and lungs we would never smoke. We would never uh, do anything to clog our arteries. We would never do, we would see the damage each morning and just choose not to do it. But because we can't see these organs and the damage that's going into there, vaping, smoking, all these things exist. But if we could see it on a window and make it sexy, no one would do it, right? So that's that's the cool part about that. They'd probably be trying to get tattoos on their lungs and on their brains, I guess, right? That's the way the culture is. But uh that's that. So all about the brain, class four laser, many ways to use it. Reach out to us at info at fulllifetampa.com. If you have any questions, we love answering any questions you have. And please share, subscribe. 
the podcast. It's growing each and every month. We love this. That's why we keep doing it. And if you have any questions that you'd like a podcast to do or any guests, I'm starting to get tired of listening to my own voice. Any guests that you want us to bring on from anywhere in the world, we'll try and get them on here and have a, a podcast about specific things that we know you want to hear about. Have a great and healthy week. Stay well. Take care.